Hello and welcome to Banished. Um, this is a indie strategy builder, like village builder game um, that came out in 2014 uh, and it's available on Steam and this is probably one of my favorite computer games that I own. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick little playthrough on it just to show you guys kind of what it was about. Um, so basically you start off by creating a town yeah, sure. Beaver lot. That's fine. <laughs> and then you can set the train type, size, climate. Um, you can just turn disasters on or off. I'm going to keep them off for this game. And then you can set your difficulty level. Um, I'll go ahead and do medium. That begins with five families. Um, and then there are some things that you're provided. So basically what this is, is um, you're starting up a civilization and you have to build basically a functioning society. So um, you start off with just a few families and a few houses and from there you have to delegate work and people to um, survive basically. Okay, so as I was saying, you have a village of people and I'm going to pause this really fast so I can kind of get myself oriented here. These are all your different professions. So your people have different jobs that they have to do. And you can actually set what those different jobs are. Uh, up here is your resources. And these are the things that kind of help keep you alive. And then... That's what I was looking for. This is kind of like my information on the town. So how much of every resource I have, um, the overall happy or health of the citizens, the overall happiness of the citizens, uh, current temperature and weather. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is start off by just clearing. Oh, that's wrong thing. First thing I want to do is just start off by just clearing some of this area so that we can actually have some resources. So what I'll do is just over here under removal and destruction tools, I selected remove resources and you just click and drag. I'm not going to do too big of an area because Pretty much, if you don't have them assigned to any jobs, these 10 laborers are just going to work on whatever's available. So they will all be working on taking care of cutting down trees and clearing rocks and stuff like that. And it looks like we are going to need yeah, another stockpile to have them put stuff on. Stockpile is basically just a flat area where they store all your resources. So that's necessary because otherwise they'll have nowhere to go with it and they'll just leave it sitting out in the field. So I have a little bit of room left on this stockpile, but it's definitely a good idea to have an open one available to them, especially if it's closer because then they can actually um, store the resources quicker. So they're just going to start storing different materials and stuff like that. So what I can do is start building some houses for them. Um, you want to make sure that they have houses so that they stay warm and obviously have a place to live. And you can actually change what the houses look like by, uh, by selecting F. So I'm just going to start placing some houses down. And as you can see, it doesn't build the house right away. Um, it's just going to set down a plot. And then your people have to build it. So what I'm going to do is assign some of my people to be builders. And actually, I'm going to assign six out of six to be builders because I want to get these houses built 
so that my people don't freeze and die. So those people will start getting to work on that right away. And the people that aren't being builders, the laborers, well, right now they're probably helping too, just because I don't have them clearing out any more resources. I should probably have them clear out some more resources just so we can have more area. Honestly, this isn't the best area to start a, vil or start a town in. Um, I don't like the fact that I'm surrounded by mountains, but this is probably just going to be a quick little playthrough anyway. Unless you guys enjoy this game, I can play this game more if you do like it. But it is a very pretty game. Um, and I just think the music's very peaceful and relaxing. Oh, duh, let's do a crop field. It's the easiest thing anyway. So I'm just gonna do the crop field right in the middle. Because, oh, that's a really big crop field. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. <laughs> the only problem with a big crop field is it takes them so much longer to plant everything. And especially when your town is still young and you don't have that many people, there's not going to be enough people to tend something that large. So right now there's this stop sign over it, and basically that just means I don't have anyone assigned to working that. So what I need to do is get myself some farmers. And what I can do here is select how many farmers I'm going to have working at this location. And then set the number of people that will be working there. And then I need to pick what I'm going to be planting. So we'll just select squash because, you know, I don't know, squashes are cool. <laughs> and then now you see I have three out of three farmers working. And they just ran right over there. Now I have a problem because I have some people here with houses over their heads. And if you see what that little icon there says, it says these citizens don't have a home. So I need to build some more houses. Um, I'm already up to, um, let's see, I've got 11 adults and two kids. So I've already got 13 people in my little town. So the, that's not enough houses. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and place some more houses down really fast. So I'm just gonna put down six more houses. And I think that should be good for now, because we do still have quite a few people that are homeless, but not too bad. Now, my builders, I have six working currently out of 12. Um, but considering the fact that I have two laborers up here, I can put two more as builders, and then the houses will get built faster, which is good because then we'll have less homeless people. Homeless people die quickly. And one thing you definitely don't want to have happen in this game is have people die. Um, they do die naturally, so after many seasons, um, you will see down here, you'll get a notification that people die of old age. Um, and then when that happens, you can actually build like a graveyard to help, it's, it's to help increase the citizens' happiness. Um, but it's not like you actually have to bury them or anything like that. They just cease to be in your game anymore. Um, but the whole point is you're trying to keep your citizens alive as long as you can so they have long, healthy, happy lives, obviously. So we have our builders building away in the rain. Um, so right now I've gotten a little notification over here, and this is saying my reserve of stone is low. So as you can see, these are the stones here. I only have one pile left in my stockpile. So, I, instead of selecting just remove resources, I'm going to have them just collect the stone. So you can just click on this little rock over here and drag, and they will go and collect just the stone out of here. 
I will eventually have them clear out all the rest of these trees too because we are going to need it. Yeah, see the reserve of firewood is low. So that means I need to build another structure. So I need to build a wood cutter. This is actually an extremely important structure to build. You will not survive your first winter without a wood cutter. I learned this the hard way um, because the first time I played this game, I, I silly, silly me thought that my people could burn just these logs in the winter time. See, they're starting to get cold. So it's very important that they have firewood so that they can keep warm throughout the winter, especially when it starts getting cold. I don't know why they're getting cold right now because it's 72 out. Like, really, dude? Desica. Um, but anyway, the wood cutter um, basically takes your wooden logs and cuts them up into firewood, and you need firewood in order to keep your citizens warm. So, um, without a wood cutter, your people will die very quickly. So you definitely need to uh, build a wood cutter very early on in the game, um, and preferably have some firewood stockpiled once winter does come. Right now we're in late spring, so we're in good shape, but of course, um, things can go bad quick in this game. <laughs> so I have eight people building. That's not, that's not necessary. We only need three. So I'm going to take these other five laborers and I'm going to just have them remove all the resources in this area. That way we have more area to build in as well. Um, also just because this small of a stockpile makes me a bit nervous. <laughs> That's a little too small for me. Oh, quit whining. It is literally 74 degrees out, Desica. I thought Desica was over here. Oh, she's, she's switched to another house and decided to be cold in that one. I guess she is only 10 years old, and she's a laborer, so... Oh, oh, uh, not done yet. It's almost done. Um, another thing that you need to keep in mind when you're building your buildings is there will be a certain amount of uh, materials you're going to need for each one. So, uh, well, I'll show you with another building. I need to get one person working as a woodcutter. So I just selected one there. Um, so one of my people, if you can see over here, is now assigned as a woodcutter, which is awesome because Desica and Lula, Lulamari are cold. So we can build another house just so I can show you. Okay, so for each building, you're going to have a set amount of things that you're going to need for them to be able to build it. So if you don't have at least that much log or stone uh, stockpiled, they're going to have to harvest those resources before they're able to get to building this house. Also, uh, right here you can see there's zero of two, meaning they need to cut down two trees before they're going to be able to start building, as you can see. There's two trees in the in the way of their building. Um, I have too many builders yet again. We only need two builders, so I have five people cutting down resources. Three people farming. Two people building and one woodcutter. This, yep, my woodcutter is doing her thing. Antoinette. Antoinette the woodcutter. Um, and then it's cool because you can also kind of just like follow a person and it'll just sit there and follow them as they do their things. So right now we're following Emiletha. 
There's some pretty strange names in this game, but it's it's still cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit, and you can actually fast forward up to 10x, yeah. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then that just allows you to get some stuff stockpiled, uh, some stuff built. Oh crap. Reserve of firewood is low. Alright, Antoinette's working on it. She's doing the best she can. Um, we are in summer already, so... Hopefully I can get some firewood stockpiled before winter comes. And before winter comes, if they don't automatically start doing this, I can do this myself. I can have them harvest the crops. Um, generally what they'll do is work until it's, usually until it's 100% yield, and then they'll start harvesting everything. And they harvest, everything they harvest goes into the barn. So your barn's basically your lifeline as far as tools, uh, clothes, um, herbs, food, all of that stuff gets stored in the barn. So as you can see, we've already jumped up to 16 people. So your population does go up pretty quickly as long as your town is healthy. Mm -hmm. Reserve of food is low. Okay, so that's kind of a problem. I'm going to build a hunting cabin. And I kind of put it away from civilization because basically you want there to be wildlife. And there's not going to be wildlife too close to your civilization. So you want this circle, see this circle, to not really encompass a populated area. That way you're more likely to run into um, game that your people can catch and hunt for food. Um, I am concerned that my house has not even gotten built yet. Okay, they're starting it. Alright, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit so that we can get that stuff built and hopefully get some food started. Okay, so as you can see now, they're starting to harvest the crops, which is good because it is early autumn. And then that little symbol that just appeared over, oh, hold on. The little symbol that just appeared over my woodcutter indicates that we've reached our limit as far as how much they're going to produce. And then it's, as you can see here, once that limit is reached, production will cease. Um, I really want to stockpile more um, firewood than that because, I don't know, I'm a little jaded from that one experience where I literally had my entire town die because I didn't have enough firewood for the winter because, like I said, I for forgot to build a woodcutter. <laughs> so we're just going to have them keep going and stockpiling more. Um, as you can see over here, my hunter cabin has been built, so I'm going to assign three hunters to work in that location. Now I have three builders here that aren't building anything, so we are going to we'll clear out those trees. Oh man, I just realized over here I have so much rock. <laughs> so they will like walk over the mountains and stuff and come over here and clear this out. I We'll eventually need them to do that. Um, probably sooner rather than later. Because, as you can see, running low on stone yet again. Okay, so I'm going to speed things up here. Low on a reserve of food. That's not good. So we have 137 squash. 
I'm going to slow this down. Winter tends to be when the game starts getting a little bit harder. Um, I'm going to also establish a gatherer's hut. And they will collect like herbs and these, these like mushrooms and stuff you see down here. They'll get all of that and throw it in the barn as well. It just helps give you a little bit more of a food supply. I'm up to 18 people, five of which are kids. Once you start getting into like the less necessary buildings that you can build, you can build stuff like um, a school, a hospital, town hall, chapel, a cemetery, like I was saying. There's a well. Uh, the well's for putting out fires, which that's turned off for me right now. I have played with um, Disasters On before, and it just, it's, like I said, not as fun. <laughs> So right now we're in late autumn. We're not even in winter yet. I'm going to have some people travel over here and pick up some stone for me. And to make things quicker, I'm going to put a stockpile here so that they're not traveling all the way here and then all the way over here. Okay, so now I have a nice little gatherer's hut here. So another thing I really like about this game, I like how the buildings are all subtly different. Just kind of adds to the charm of this game and this game is just so charming. You can play this game for hours on end. It sucks you in. Especially, like I said, once the town starts getting bigger, it really does become more of a challenge. And it is just so engrossing and so fun. Um, I really do enjoy this game. And of course, right after I said that you need to have your hunter's lodge out in the middle of the woods, all the deer want to come just chill in my village. Rude. So we're still pretty low on food. Which makes me nervous. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place a fishing dock because I finally found a place where I can place one. Fishing, in my experience, is a major help in boosting your food production for your village, so I'm quite happy that I found a place where I can place that. Alright, so our fishing dock is finally built, and I have three laborers left, so I'm going to assign all three to the fishing dock. And hopefully that will get us a little bit better food production. Alright, and I think I'm actually going to end the game here. Uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed this, and uh, comment below if you want to see future Banished episodes. I can definitely continue with this if this is something you guys are interested in. Um, Please subscribe if you want to see more content from me, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.